14 comes live. A little bit of behind the scenes look what it took to make this happen, as well as some of the great people that are part of the Prime Wars trilogy that are on all the periphery. You know, I think there's a lot that went into this. And uh, first of all, I'd like the people on, on, uh, on stage to introduce themselves. I'm John Warden, design manager at Hasbro. Um, I'm a toy designer, and I love my job. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, my name is Mario, uh, senior graphic designer for Transformers. Uh, been on Transformers for almost 10 years now, so. Hey guys, uh, I'm Marcelo, I've been working for Transformers for 15 years. Yeah. Long as on the panel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an illustrator with the concept of the art but I've been doing a lot of these back at Transformers. My name is Adam Kramazewski, I'm a game designer working at SpaceX Games, a developer behind Transformers Air Force. Um, Dave Irwin, and I'm the franchise creative lead at, for Transformers at Hasbro. I've been there for about two years, and prior to that, I was the executive creative director of DC Comics, and for like 17 years of building the universe. And so that's my role now is to try to bring the Transformers universe in a more cohesive and, and, and uh, consistent. And that includes animation, movies, television, and consumer products. So as you guys know, we're all inspired by what's come to be known over the past few years is G1, Generation 1. Generation 1 uh, was an energetic and wonderful time where uh, cartoons, comic books, and toys that we love came to life in an incredibly magical way. Our challenge on Combiner Wars and starting with, a, with, a, with the Prime Wars Trilogy idea was how do we bring to life these toys in a way that captures the imagination of that went into the toys in the first place, paying tribute to them, but bringing them to life in a way that maybe would kind of bring on board some new fans. I see lots of new fans in the audience today, and that makes me really excited. So. Uh, I'd like to kind of share with you the idea that all the different pieces of the puzzle that went into Prime Wars Trilogy that I think really are getting people excited about it today, and it's making it a big success. So to all or one, we've got the toy line, which obviously is the, is the bread and butter. It's a lot of fun, but it can't do everything. You've also got digital gaming. The Earth Wars game, we know a lot of fans out there are really, really loving this, and, and it's just it's a lot of fun to be part of uh, part of that as well. Last but not least, we've got animation. So, so many things go into this, the storytelling uh, that comes from our great copywriters, the awesome branding that comes from Mario and, and the other awesome artists on the branding team, and the incredible illustrations that come with, from Alana guys like, like Marcelo here on stage. So let's walk through some of the, the pieces of the puzzle that you guys maybe have never seen before. It all starts uh, with Combiner Wars. Combiner Wars uh, began, honestly, as not a trilogy. <laughs> it, was, it was a bunch of us kind of talking about, uh, I was, at the time, I was working with, uh, with Mark, and Mark, Mark was talking about how he would like to bring to life the, the aerial bots and a bunch of other Transformers in a way. And he had, a, had an idea of how to, to make his fuse work. Um, so we started working with Takara's homie, and um, kind of laid out a vision for this thing. So this is a piece of never before seen art um, that we actually had commissioned. This is something that, that we do internally. Before we get fans excited, we actually have to get ourselves excited, if that makes sense. So I have to kind of sell my senior management team and say, this is going to be really fun. Check it out. And <laughs> so we had this awesome uh, battle scene kind of depicted. We never went in the direction of having a giant having them battle an arena above a black hole, but, you know, I thought it was pretty fun. <laughs> but what's interesting is you do see Alpha Trion on there, like kind of the Arbiter and, you know, Quintessons and stuff like that. My vision was to have it be an ultimate showdown with Transformers. Um, but that showdown would never have happened if it wasn't for the talented minds of Takara's homie. We're actually privileged in the audience right now to have one of the original creators of Transformers uh, the micro change line, Mr. Yoke Sun. Everyone. Else. <laughs> the Hasbro Takara Tomi relationship goes all the way back to, I believe, the, the 1960s. It became really came alive for Transformers in the early 80s. And the 
creativity of this team never ceases to impress me. Our partnership is stronger than ever before, as evidenced by the awesome toys and, and everything else that you guys are seeing. So I see a lot of co-workers here, but I also see friends. This is taken on uh, top of the building at the car zone, so we all got together for a big family picture. When we started off the, the idea of minor wars, we took a close look at the, at the connection. Mr. Clooney Harrison and, and uh, Takara Tomi actually um, wanted to improve upon the work for Cybertron joint and have something that could be that sustain uh, robust play. So we actually worked with the dovetail system, kind of like something that we work in, uh, I don't know, furniture making. So they click together, but it has to be able to click apart very easily. So here are some images of that, uh, the, the, the linkage, but also um, Nishimoto-san and Hisui-san had this great idea of how to make a fist turn into a foot and a weapon that allowed us not only to kind of add diversity to it, but save money. Which, in the beginning, we had to prove to a lot of people this is a good idea. Once it started really making, like, making people excited, then we knew we had hit our hands and it was very easy to, to do more cool stuff. Um, that brought us to this big guy, Devastator. So when we start off, I, I'm going to kind of focus on just the Titans, just kind of top level. So the type, this is our first Titan class uh, character in the Prime Wars trilogy. He, um, we wanted him to be really big so that he looked like his toy appearance. So what we do is uh, we work with Takara Tomi to start off with what's called a block model stage. It's literally done in rock paper and pencils. Some of these guys are very hands-on. Uh, then they'll use um, CAD technology to kind of create these um, breadboard models is what they're called. So this is Mr. Miyake posing with uh, <coughs> posing with Devastator. You'll see him pop up a few more times in the presentation. Um, then from there, we take those block models once the extent dimensions are determined, and we'll work with the car to lay on intense detail. And as you guys know, I'm super stickler for detail. So here's just a glimpse of all of the incredible um, designs that went into creating Devastator. These would go to um, the, the CAD specialist who then lays that detail in on a final stage. Concurrently, that, that block CAD gets created as a final scale model. So this was determined for, allows us to figure out cost, packaging size, a bunch of other factors. Sometimes Marcelo gets these things. Yeah, he has yeah. to like figure out how to make it look cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look how big he is. Steve's <laughs> doing. <laughs> They were trying to impress me, like, look, John, it's really big. <laughs> and here's the final tooling model. This, this uh, so big, as you can see, it eclipses the green, the blue screen. Yeah. Um, and um, from here, we will then go to tooling stage, and we'll start to paint them, which is a really exciting part of the process. Next up, we have Titan's Return. A lot of you guys in the room maybe have even come on board because of Titan's Return. It's gotten so much excitement, it just makes me happy to be part of it. Um, Titan's Return, when we had to sell this in, we sold it in as an idea of like, uh, we did another one of these like schmaltzy paintings <laughs> to kind of figure out like, hey, okay, they're these little guys, they have lots of power, we had, we explored ideas of using target masters and headmasters, but ultimately we settled on making everybody's head exchange. Ulti in the beginning I wanted to have them actually be like triple changers and have them also become weapons, but that just proved to be too expensive and ungainly. So we just focused on really having them um, power up. These are actually drawings done by commissioned by Andrew Griffith of IDW. Um, then uh, when we decided to do the, the big Titan guy, Ed Massiello was working on this guy. You can see that he's actually using what's called partial tooling. So we, we worked with Hasui to um, use the tools from Metroplex to actually make the scale of this guy bigger, but trying to put the pieces of Metroplex in different places. You can see the red is partial and the rest of it is, is new. Red, the little red areas are where the labels go. And here's the final image of what the guy looks like. He's pretty awesome. Uh, and then, you know, every good guy needs a bad guy to fight. Here's some images of Trypticon. That, that faux model up in the corner is kind of funny because that uh, the one on the, on the left-hand side, or that side, I get confused. <laughs> that's actually a foam, foam model that was uh, we created at Hasbro. I literally got into a bandsaw and like, you know, cut these pieces up. And then we mailed that guy to uh, Tokyo. And then Sui created that guy out of broken Metroplex parts to prove to me how to do So again, these are like pieces of the process that we see. We tried out lots of things. We tried lights in him, but the lights actually sacrificed on his posability. 
So although there were lights in, he's a little bit shorter, not available, so we took those out. And instead, oh, <laughs> there he is again. <laughs> he's again showing us how big he is. Miyake, the ever effervescent Miyake son. Very animated. Very. <laughs> And uh, here's the final model showing how we integrated the eating feature. If you haven't had a chance to feed Triptych, go feed him. It's, it's his hour of enjoyment. Um, very, very fun. So next up um, is Power of the Prime. Power of the Prime is our newest ecosystem. Um, I'm going to show you some of the early concept sketches for it. Power of the Prime is we wanted to, we knew we had to go big with the gods, but we weren't sure how to do that. Some of the gods are relatively obscure, like Megatronus and Prima and Amalgamus, finding a toy of Amalgamus Prime. So we decided to focus their essence down to the, the super-powered little guys that are actually were backwards compatible with Titan to turn. But originally we had a sketch for Prima and Megatronus. You can see the original sketch for um, Volcanicus over the side, and then also some early drawings for Megatronus, as well as Rodimus. <laughs> And we also created what we, we called this, uh, this, this Zodiac, which actually kind of became, this is a kind of a good segue to the next part. Um, as you look at the Zodiac, it's, it's, a, it's a sort of a thing that powers up uh, the, the characters, gives them the, the momentarily the powers of the gods. It's almost like a video game idea, but in your imagination as you play. So hopefully you see, we'll see more of these kinds of cool integrations uh, across the board between comic books and gaming and stuff like that. But part of, uh, part of what brings us to life is actually the packaging. So the packaging and branding really are something that um, bring this to life in a cool way. And Mario, do you want to speak a little bit about how, how it's done? Sure. Um, you know, obviously early in the beginning, um, I focus on a lot of the stuff that John craves. Uh, just so I can get my mind and stop, you know, rolling, um, trying to figure out like what are the focal points that, that we want to communicate on packaging, um, you know, because there's always there's always so much that's in there, uh, but we can only communicate so much on packaging. Um, but here are some of the uh, the things that we create. Um, these are kind of like movie posters for us, <laughs> just to kind of like tease up um, everyone, in, you know, uh, for PR and, and even. Inside of Hadro, like we'll, we'll print these things out and just get people excited about it. It makes it makes it feel like it's real. Yeah. Like I think yeah. internally, once you start hanging these posters up, people go, "Oh wow, <coughs> this is a thing. I want to see that movie." <laughs> 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 and, they're, they're, and we'll work yeah. we'll work with the copywriters to uh, to, to actually put slogans. Marcelo, did you work on any of these guys? Yeah, I worked on actually I worked on all of those guys. Like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky because I like all those. Process. Uh, this this was really, I, I like when Mario come to me and said, "Oh, Marcelo, can we, we need a really cool image to, to sell the, the the idea of the combiner, the the title. Have you seen the, the title return? I think at that time we didn't have a, yet the fortress. I guess. Yeah. So I did it with Optimus. It was yeah. It was Mario yeah. idea. So like they had connection to the body. But uh, but my favorite piece was this was the power of the prime because I couldn't make out a lot of that is fine. And this one was commissioned after the, 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 the fan war. Yeah. So it was fun because I was working at the same time the, the war was happening. The same person, oh, hold on a little bit. <laughs> you guys can see okay. it here too. This this is the poster that has actually never been revealed before that includes Moon Racer and a couple of other characters on there. We had it had it, had it edited because we didn't want to spoil any surprises. Yeah. But yeah, there's there's Moon Racer, which is kind of exciting. Um, so here's here's actually some early logo design, which is this kind of cool. So yeah, it's like a hundred years ago, dude. You know, when I, was, <laughs> when I was asked to like put these pages together, um, it was kind of funny. It was kind of cool because coming across like the the image in the corner with the, the little green circle there, you know, it might not look like much, but like as John was saying earlier, the, um, the connection, the joints, um, for the combiners, you know, that that's probably one of the most important things. Uh, so. As far as the design of, and, and how I look at logos, you know, I'd like to try to incorporate or get inspired by things that, that we're working with. Um, so that little circle um, was something that, that interested me. Um, so you can see some of the, the logos on the other side where I'm trying to incorporate the circles, some arrows that are going towards the middle, things coming together with the C for combiner, uh, combiners. Um, 
so something like that is, is just how my mind works when I'm asked to do some of these projects. Uh, but like John said in the beginning, it wasn't a trilogy, so the logo, was, <laughs> the logo was meant to be something like a one and done. A one and done. Yeah. Um, but then when we did so at, well, they were like, no, we'll make it a trilogy. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see some of the earlier uh, ideas for the Combiner Wars. Um, and then where we ended up, which is, you know, something, it's very Cybertronian, it has a texture that, that, that you would expect to see on something like that. And it was something that we could translate to chapter to chapter. Um, so that was cool. That, that's been that goes too fast. Okay. There you go. <laughs> um, so what we have here, like, Marcelo was saying earlier, I always contact Marcelo or some of the other guys that, that we work with around the world. Um, just to, you know, we start off with sketches, uh, just to get the vibe of, of, of the character, see if, if the character's illustration and pose uh, will fit enough into the packaging. Um, I'd love to do stuff that are huge, I mean, Transformers is a big robot, um, but we always have constrictions with our packaging, uh, pipelines and, and stuff. See, there's some, some other stuff that are that, uh, we've commissioned and, and gotten done. Um, one of the things that I've, I've tried since I've been on, on the team is not just to commission a, a robot just standing. That's boring. There's no story behind it. Um, so there's, there's one in particular that I wanted to talk to you on, on this slide here. Uh, I believe his name is Strix, the, uh, like the Tiger-esque looking thing uh, jumping through the glass. Uh, there might not be a lot going on, but if you really look, uh, as he's, you know, breaking through that glass, there's a reflection of the guy or the robot that he's attacking. Just small details like that that I like to oh, operate. I never noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Really cool. Detail. Yeah, really cool. And then uh, for the, the trilogy, knowing that it was going to be the, the, the last of the uh, Prime Wars, uh, Illustration-wise, we wanted to just do something a little special without going too crazy as far as moving away from the other two. Because on shelf, obviously on stores, we wanted it to still feel like a family. Um, so on, on, on here, you can see they're both characters the same, same pose, um, but just evolution of you know brighter colors, um, getting a little bit more details, making chrome feel like actual chrome, um, and just the energy of, of the Primes um, and some of the, the icons from them, just like energizing the, the character up. That, that was something that I was trying to really focus on. There you go. Uh, and then working with Marcelo, you know, this is some of the stuff that he's worked on. So maybe you could. Yeah, Marcelo, can you speak a little bit about um, when you're when you're sitting down to draw these guys? Do you start with pen, or do you go right in digital, or how, what's your process? Uh, yeah, I, with, with most of them, I start digital, you know, because it's faster, and then like, uh, it's easy for me to back, back and forth for you guys, so you need to edit or change some parts. Which is great, because sometimes I don't always give them that much time to work on this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I keep, uh, one thing that I, um, I have to, take, to really take care about the illustration, uh, the restriction for the packing, so, at the same time, I need to, to come up with, with a really good pose that can stand by because, like, I've been doing Transformers for 15 years. I've been packing for 15 years. The back uh, needs to look like different. The pose needs to look like different. And at the same time, they, they uh, I like to give, before I was an artist, I was a fan. So I want to get a, give a, a pen and quote on my ground. So I like to put some, like, sometimes I, get, I like to make a homage to an old package, put it a different way, like, for example, part and rational pose, I try to do something similar with the classic, but not exactly the same. Uh, like for Star Screen Coronation, I like, uh, I like to emulate the pose he does at the movie. So I try to get all those things together. When I got the inputs from, for example, from Mario and Kendall, at that time when I was working on Megatrons, they said, oh, so can you show him to do some energy? He has this kind of power, so I try to incorporate this kind of thing as well. And, but I always start with digital, then I move to pencils. Okay. 
And it depends on, I do pencils uh, like traditional way. Yeah. Sometimes I do digital, it depends on what time frame. <laughs> but I, I like to do Sorry. the pencils. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so a lot of times we will literally give Marcelo almost nothing work. I yeah. give him one of those like uh, block mile things and a picture of the GE transformer, or I'll say, hey, you know what um, Grimlock looks like, go ahead. <laughs> He'll just figure it out and then. You know, we'll try to work with Sakara to kind of make things match up, and, and it ends up because we don't have time. All right, we're always going, keep going right to the deadline. We're trying to get as much as we can. <laughs> but definitely thing that I like this this, this particular uh, packaging. Uh, Marilyn and, and John have been given a lot of freedom to work on it. They, they focus more on the fantasy side of the illustration, not of like the illustration needs to look like the toys, but more the fantasy showing the story behind the character. What's happening with the, the, the thrillers or the, the toy, yep. the brand? Yeah, and, and to that point too, uh, just before the, you, uh, you go on. Yeah. Want to keep going? Yeah, go ahead. Make, make the point. Just, the, uh, just to make the, the, the point that I was going to make is, you know, I know that sometimes there, there are limitations and costs on, on toys and trying to get them as, as cool as possible. But yeah. from my point of view, it's like, you guys are, you know, you're looking at the toy packaging and, and you're like, oh, who's that guy? And I don't want that limitation to ever be there, so I'm trying to give you guys as much as I can from, like, history-wise, you know I mean? I, I try to get it all in there. Um, yeah, so there was a slide in here, but uh, I can speak to what it was. There, the, uh, it was the, it was the idea of the evolution of packaging. So when you see um, a great logo isn't always the same all the way through. So in the beginning of the Prime Wars trilogy, the Quiet North packaging looked one way, type of turn looked a little bit different. And then the last one, if you stop by the booth and check out the, the uh, Power of the Primes, talk to Mario. Uh, we're here to, to talk to you guys. And it's exciting to see that journey that the, the packaging has taken. Speaking of journeys, the next on that journey is uh, my friend Adam, the space right. We had an opportunity to talk, and, uh, and it's exciting to really understand um, what goes into a game. Um, we've been lucky, you know, because the digital world, we're able to use the CAD data that I'm working on with toys, and it kind of gives them a great, like, starting point for them as they start to build models. Uh, Adam, do uh, you want to give us a little bit of a preview as to how things are going? Let me slide this down. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm like Tapper. Like, I mean, no, yeah. I'm not sure if it's starting with <laughs> the video. It might be. Oh. Wait. Yeah, I think the first video. Uh, wait, no. It, it, yeah, right. So this is actually Volcanicus being modeled and animated uh, in one of our uh, software packages. And you can see actually getting all the mods to move and combine, especially for Volcanicus, because when we implemented some of the bots into the game, we never expected dynamos to combine. So getting all of that, like moving all the bones so that they actually fit and can animate uh, was a huge challenge for our artists. Uh, but I think I'll show it in game in a moment. Uh, I think they pulled it off, so it's quite a complex process. Uh, right, next up. Uh, oh, sorry about that. Uh, I, that's the next one. Uh, so actually, uh, the really, really good thing when it comes to marketing our game and then putting these things together is we don't do any you know, fake CGI. We don't create two versions of the models. We actually use the same models we create for the game, and that's a mobile game. We use the same models uh, in there to actually create our uh, key arts and the marketing um, packages and screenshots. So this is actually our game world, and this is Freda King being posted uh, for, for a marketing shot that we will later turn into like a cover for the game. And actually, the models you could have seen in our booth, uh, the Transformers that are booth on the, on the floor, um, yeah, these are all models from the game just being posted and, and with some maybe light or, or specialized frames added um, in, in, in the software. So that's pretty good. And uh, next slide. Yeah, and that's a finished product. That's our uh, key art for that's kind of this which is just jaw dropping. And with these, with these uh, combiners, um, the, the story behind that is quite interesting because we knew we wanted to add more combiners to the game. We launched the first one, the Station Superior, uh, back in October. Uh, but with uh, with the Dynamo combiner, this is something that we initially thought, you know. We want Predator King, but what if we had a Dinobots combined? What if we could pitch this to Hasbro? This is a crazy idea. They'll never approve this. But there's so many fan-made ones. 
let's make one ourselves. So we uh, put all the dinosaurs together, kind of like, you know, with duct tape everywhere. <laughs> and then we created this, uh, we tried to see how it looks when it animates. And you can actually see Dino King, that was our name, because we thought of Freda King, Dino King, that's going to work. Uh, and we actually put, uh, we, could, we put Swoosh, also known as Strafe, on the back as the wings, because we thought of Freda King has wings, so let's put wings here. Um, and we sent that over to Hasbro, and Hasbro is like, Mm, you know, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's actually so cool that we are making a toy already. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, why don't you guys put it in the game? But the toy is coming out next year. But you know what? If you can make it, maybe we can, maybe we can show it to Hasbro. Uh, so we're like, okay, get to work. <laughs> we reject all the dinosaurs, uh, try to make them um, get some extra bones in there so they can animate and combine. And uh, we ended up with Volcanicus. Uh, which is really, really exciting. Some of you guys have already played with him. Uh, if you haven't, I'll do a live demo. Yes, yes, yeah, show us a live demo. Yeah, because, uh, oh, nah, that's me, nice. Uh, so we were supposed to show a video, but I thought, you know what? What can go wrong if I do a live demo? Live's <laughs> <laughs> always better. This is a volcanic interesting <laughs> game. He actually combines as well uh, inside the combiner labs. Look how cute. Slug is. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I really love, um, yeah, pay attention, pay attention to the slug and uh, the anticipation that he, that he gets. When he looks, a swoop just flies around and like, looking at like, oh, 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 where's me? My turn. I'm quite heavy, just let me. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, bringing these characters to life and like adding like, some kind of personality, even through the combination, is something that we really look forward to. And of course, we already have Siberian and Optimus Maximus already in the game. And actually, they're huge sword. This is, I think, inspired by the classic Rumor sword, right? Uh, except it's bigger and it's on fire. Uh, and the theme of fire is uh, what we've done uh, with gameplay. And for me personally, it was uh, quite a challenge. Normally with boss, I feel quite confident that what I'm going to do is, is going to be good. I just show it to other people on the team and they usually like it. But with Volcanic, I feel like, oh, this is, this is a lot of pressure. This is the best and biggest combiner, the, the best one we probably ever have in the game. And if I work it, I, I shouldn't even be on the stage. So, uh, let's see if you guys agree uh, with me that I think Volcanicus is pretty awesome. This is enemy base. I'm going to deploy Volcanicus over here and show you what he can do. He has three abilities and he's going to cross assemble. But he has abilities. Yeah, the fun is the names themselves are quite epic. We've got the Energy Sword, which is long range. And uh, I can take care of this. Boom. And uh, then we've got a flamethrower because uh, it just felt like a good <laughs> way to roll some defenses. And then we've got a final ability called Extinction. Uh, I think it's a fitting name. Uh, we can evaporate this place. Let's see. Three, two, one. There we go. We're going to meet the star. And we jump over there. And yeah, there's not much left of this base. Uh, at this point, more fire, more fire. The theme is quite singular. It's fire and brimstone. Uh, all right. So, uh, as always, combiners have a limited power. We actually have Cheetor that's coming onto the game. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll take the whole of the time of just getting all the dinosaurs in there. Uh, it's always fun to see Grimlock transform, run over, and smash into pieces. Uh, Cheetor over there getting beamed by lasers, uh, always better in a cheetah form. Come on, come in there. Get, get closer, get closer. All right, no? All right, I'll just use swoop. And there you go, flying around, bombarding things. Yeah, so. Cheetor is coming in, great. I just like to see him as a cheetah. I agree. <laughs> Happy means. And the cool thing about him, is actually coming up next week, the fourth Beast Wars character in the game, and uh, he gets faster whenever he destroys something. So at some point, <laughs> that lasts for like 90 seconds. He's going to crazy fast, so sorry Swindle, you're out <laughs> for a count. That's, that's fantastic. It's, so so the, the last piece of the, uh, the Prime Wars trilogy that we want to talk to you about is... Um, oh, well, that's yeah. right, here are the final render. Yeah, that's, that's the final render of the in-game in -game combiners. And so, check out Freda King too, and, and, and we really feed off each other. That's one of those things that's cool about working in such a great team. It's like, you do something, does something cool in the game, we might end up doing it in a toy. So it's, uh, it's very exciting to do that. Uh, 
Next up is the, is David Irwin is going to speak a little bit about the Prime Wars trilogy animated series. David, I'm not sure if the clicker is working, so I might I might do a more opening. I was enjoying much of the return, and then I'll go into uh, just kind of an overview of the process and the uh, difficulties that John throws my way. That I have to overcome. So, anyway, so uh, can we start? The episodes from eight to ten. And each of them, no, it's 11, that's right, 11 episodes at 10 minutes each. So that's 110 minutes. That's more, more than a, an average film. Usually an average film is an hour and a half, about 90 minutes. So, which brings us to the process. So we got very excited that we suddenly had a, a little bit more of a budget to work with. And the process that we have to do is, of course, it starts with the written word. And here's just some example of just some pages from the, uh, I mean, you can read it, but you know, the, the story's been, been changed. I mean, <laughs> we keep rewriting things and so forth. Uh, yeah, not the story works yet. Yeah. yeah. All right, so on the writing process, what we had to do is we had to go, and I would go in either to L.A. to Machinima or a couple, a number of times, or come to, uh, to Rhode Island office, and then in my office or their office, we would start putting out index cards. And because I looked at this as a feature film, because of the length, what we did is we broke out into three acts. And then we started breaking down the episodes of how do we open it with a big opening and then come down to a cliffhanger that will get you to want to come over to the next episode. And so it's quite a challenge to start you know, creating this art and what are the, the story throughs for the different characters and what their journeys are and how does it all build to the big climax. So these are all the kind of the thought process that we had to go through to get there. And as we do this, then suddenly I remember John came into my office while I had Machinima and John says, hey, you know, we have overlord. <laughs> we have some more of our toy, and suddenly, you know, we really want want to to fans get love fans excited about it. It's kind of like, there you go. Man, I just spent <laughs> all this time, you know, helping to create the story with headmasters and so forth. And it's like, oh, well, that's not as important now. I want to overlord it. <laughs> all right. So then I had to figure out how do we get overlord into the story without feeling like we just shoehorned him in there. And um, but it turned out to be a really good thing because as we go into the next chapter, we were able to bring in more relevancy to him and give him more of an important role. And really, in the final third chapter, you be able to see how everything kind of comes together and we fill in all the holes and give explanation as to what everybody's roles uh, of characters throughout the different chapters as they came in. So the all together through the three chapters, you're going to find yourself a really, really kind of this epic, epic story. Well, it's really cool. We had a chance to work with great artists like Guido Guidi and Andrew Griffith, uh, people who are big fans and, and are into the franchise. Yeah, so what we had to do is go, we had to create these, uh, of course we started with these, these character designs and we did these turns and is there a, a cat? Uh, yeah, it, you know? we're running a little bit. Okay, yeah. all right, running a little long. All right. Yeah. So what we do is after we do the character designs and we have cats made, because we're doing 3D, we're doing uh, 3D animation in there, but then we render it so it has that little bit flat anime look to it. And when we are creating all these characters, the um, one of the things that, that's interesting, I know that you guys would like to have more and more characters, but what a lot of people don't understand is that the budget actually limits how many characters we can actually build and put into it. And of course, then you have the actors and so forth. So there's a lot of different things, factors that we keep in mind to try to make sure that we get as big of a, of a, uh, of a show as we can. And this truly does feel very epic and big. It's also these. These, these are some. These, yeah, these are some uh, from from Titan's Return. You can see, you know, two villains standing side by side. It's, yeah, because what happened is, well, and, and, yeah, and, yeah, and machine was a project. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, machine was not good about the uh, listening to fans. And on the first chapter, fans loved Megatron, and they loved the fact that those two were had to kind of reluctantly team up. 
And we listened to that, so, and the Shinema certainly did, so we made sure that Negatron has a really strong presence, and we do have some great banter between them. And these are all, for the first time, nobody has seen these before, but these are actual screenshots of the new animated series. So you're seeing it for the first time here. You can see this, the idea of Windblade as a city speaker comes right. to life as well. Scale. It's really cool. The scale is really cool. And then, oh, you guys have this. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so we could treat it, we thought of them as almost like God, so we wanted destruction. <laughs> <laughs> I kept talking to Dave, it's like, are there small buildings? Can the small buildings get destroyed? <laughs> are there bridges that can get rest? And last but not least, here's an incredible exclusive first piece of artwork. Yep. Exclusive exclusive piece of artwork that is the first chance for you guys to see it. It yeah. uh, really captures the feeling of Titan Shinra. And they created it just for this presentation to really get you guys excited and share with you just how how much work and dedication and love that they put into this animated series. Uh, David, when can we uh, expect to see Titan Shinra? Well, as you saw in the trailer, it's going to be in November and then it's going to be twice a week, and it's going to be on Go90. That's where it all comes out. So thank you, everybody. That was the Prime Wars Trilogy panel. I think we may have a couple of minutes for uh, Q&A. No? Looks like, yeah, I think the next panel is right in there. So thank you, everybody, for coming.